have some preview comics up here, books that are supposed to come out. No, no, don't, no, no. <laughs> Things like the first issue of The Clone Conspiracy. This is out on Wednesday. This upcoming Wednesday it is not out yet. So if you're going to come up here, you have to promise that, uh, that you're not going to tell anybody what, you, what you've read. Now, first, I want to pick the OG Scarlet Spider over there. Do you want to come read this? <laughs> yes, come on up, man. He could be anyone under that mask. <laughs> Free to read it? There you go. Oh God, there we go. That could be Scott Snyder. <laughs> it could be. Anybody. Dead No More, The Clone Conspiracy. Here are some stunning interior pages. Dan, you want to talk about the backup story? Oh, this is great. We're going back in time and showing you something you've never seen before that is canon. It's true. It all works. You'll see it Wednesday. Gwensday. And here are the covers of Clone Conspiracies 2, 3, and 4 by Gabrielle Del Otto. They are incredible. Number two comes out November 2nd. And actually, I'm about to show you some pages that only one group of people has ever seen before. It's Amazing Spider-Man 20, which is the first part of the tie-ins for the Amazing Spider-Man issues right there. Who can tell me who that yellow person is on that uh, 21 cover? You s Carrion. It's true. It's true. Come up, come up. I'm giving you a comic. Yes. We also have Silk tying in. Is that a new costume for Silk? She's getting a new costume to preserve her identity out on the West Coast. It's true. She's a little worried about people making connections. If, if Cindy Moon and Silk, they're in New York, and then they're both in California as well. So she's got this new identity called Silkworm. And we gotta Who's going to make that connection? <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. She really thought this plan through. Uh, and there's another book that's tying into Clone Conspiracy as well. The Prowler. Devin, keep talking, buddy. Oh, I'm doing great. Did you guys read Amazing Spider-Man number 17? Yeah. So, spinning directly out of the pages of that book, we've got Hobie Brown working for New You. And really what we're doing is we're working to really flesh out what it's like for characters who are in New You. We want to give you guys a full picture of this story, because Dan's built something that is a conspiracy, and it's going to blow you away. It's really great. All right. Up next... Spider-Woman number 13 kicks off a new story arc written by Dennis Hopeless with amazing art by Veronica Fish. It's some rough stuff coming up for both Roger and Jess. And yeah, Veronica Fish is amazing, so it's a beautiful book. Absolutely. Another new launch we got coming up is Venom. <laughs> now, uh, Devin, that Venom doesn't look like the Venom we've been seeing in Guardians of the Galaxy or his recent other solo book. This is... Old school, long, slobbery tongue, fangs, venom. Like, this is venom as you've known and loved him since he, since he began. Awesome. How about uh, Spider-Man Deadpool? Anyone reading that book? There's this new character called Itsy Bitsy that you could see there in the background of that cover. We're just starting to reveal kind of who she is and where she comes from. This is something that no one has ever seen before. On the left was Ed's very first sketch of her. And we workshopped it with Ed and with Joe Kelly. And, and on the right is the final design of what she looks like. She's really trippy, really terrifying. Like, she's one of the scariest new villains in the last several years that I've ever read. In issue 11, Penn Gillette of Penn and Teller is writing the issue. Any Penn and Teller fans out there? Woo! Yep. Penn came in, and in this issue, Deadpool and Teller switch places. We've got another launch coming up. We have Amazing Spider-Man, Renew Your Vows. If you are one of the people who thinks that Peter and MJ should still be together, this is an incredible book for you. Just amazing. Terrific book. I was reading like three runs of Spidey at the same time because when I was a kid, they had the, the Lee Ditko's in the pocket comics and they had the Ramitas were in Marvel Tales and the Ross Andrew was uh, in normal Spidey. And I just love Spidey, but then I hit that... Uh, the Lee Ditko story in Spider-Man 8, where they got to have the boxing match, and Peter finally got to like punch Flash Thompson, and it was the greatest comic in the world. <laughs> I love that little kid me was like, this is great! <laughs> That's awesome. Devin? Uh, I think it would probably be Amazing Spider-Man Coming Home by JMS and JR Jr., uh, which was the first introduction of Moreland, uh, and it caught me just at the right time, and it blew my mind. Was... That's awesome. Okay, so my question is, uh, Spider-Man's had a pretty bad track record when it comes to clone story arcs. <laughs> what's, uh, 
What specifically is different this time that was able to make it a sellable idea? What is different this time? Me. <laughs> That's fair. And Jim Chung. Jim Chung. Yeah. Giuseppe. Uh, God, that was a horrible answer. Um, <laughs> Um, one of the big things you're going to see about clone conspiracy is all the clones we've seen in the past, the memories those clones have are from the moment they gave, like Gwen and Peter gave a blood sample in college. Um, these memories go all the way to death. You've never seen this. This is someone, it really is, it's less a clone and more a reanimation. Um, and that's going to add a whole new level to this story that will hurt you. Dan, last year you had an unscheduled signing set up somewhere and you got chipped your tooth and you weren't able to sign anything. Yeah, I, I pulled out a felon. I didn't have any, I didn't have my books with me and you sat there in pain while I ran to go get all my books to come back and you still sat there and signed everything and I really appreciate it. I came here to say thanks and I actually want to give you a print. I mean, slot, ladies and gentlemen, a man of the people. Thanks, Les. That's so nice. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. Do you have a question too, or do is that just for that? Oh, awesome. That's great. so nice. Thank you. That's great. Oh. Oh. Olivier Coipel, design, doing a Scott Pilgrim riff. That's oh, that, that looks awesome. That's awesome. Are you having any hopes or aspirations on your stories coming into movies? I just want to do comics because they're fun. They <laughs> this fun. is all I've ever wanted to do. Yeah. Um, I, and. <laughs> We always try to make sure that people who uh, watch the movie can come and understand the comics. We, don't, we try never to like uh, make our comics exactly match them, or we haven't in over a decade. Um, but we always try to make them friendly to that. There's no point where Marvel's twisting my arm and says, make it like the movie. Mm -hmm. I think you'll find in my run, without them even asking, I'm like, oh, the lizard's coming up in Amazing 2. We're going to do a lizard arc then. Because my take on that is there's a million commercials on TV and posters, and I would like people to like pick up the comic and get sucked into our world. And you trust in the intelligence of people to know the difference. Sure. <laughs>